Um, many of you know, my name is Kim Lau. And um, I'm really excited to share this tech talk today because I had a lot of fun making it. And hopefully, you will love it when you hear about it. Um, so a show of hands, who has seen The Italian Job? Yes. So happy. So essentially, The Italian Job has everything that I could ever want. It has Mark Wahlberg, Charlize Theron, a bunch of Mini Coopers. But I think the real person that no one really pays attention to is this little guy over here. His name is Lyle. And in every single heist movie, there's always that one computer whiz that like, just does crazy things on his laptop. And no one quite understands how, but like, it kind of just happens. And the first time I watched this movie, I was just like a 12-year-old boy. And I was like, obviously like, amazed by it. And I wanted to know like, how the hell it was done. Um, so watching Lyle, um, yeah, so if any of you have seen the movie, you'll see, you'll see that he sits in a train station and he just hacks like the LA train traffic signaling system and like no problem whatsoever. And I was like, I wonder if it was possible. So uh, anyone other than Chell know what I did during my review week on Monday? No one? I wish I did. I unfortunately did not try. Maybe I should have, but I tried to hack LearnDot. So what happened was um, I spent most of Monday just trying to like go through the little things that Omri taught us during Author just to kind of like have some fun and learn a little bit more about what he taught us about web security. Just because that was probably my favorite uh, workshop and but like we didn't really have that much time on it because it was like a little bit rushed so I just want to spend a little bit of time on it. Um, so I spent all of Monday trying to dig through LearnDot, looking at the front end code, looking at the authentication, um, looking at uh, all the little things that I could potentially do because I was like, if I could do that, that would be pretty awesome. That's, like, that's my goal right there. And just imagine Monday after the first day of senior phase, all of you walk in and every single time you open LearnDot, there's just a giant picture of a bunny. Like every single time. That's actually possible if you actually know what cross-site scripting is. And I will talk a little bit about that. Um, so for my tech talk today, I'm going to walk you through kind of what I've learned during that day about what I think and pretty sure it's like to, like the thought process behind like what hackers kind of do. Because that was always kind of a mystery for me. And just like reading a lot of articles and just thinking and just like reading about what they kind of have to like figure out to bypass systems is kind of what I'm going to talk to you all about today. Um, so hopefully you can share in that excitement with me as we try to break LearnDot. Um, so the first thing, uh, so the first, a quick disclaimer, anything that I say right now, I don't suggest that you do. I'm just saying that right out in the front. Um, but first thing that I'm going to talk about is cross-site scripting. So I'm going to do, so many of you probably remember what cross-site scripting is, but I'm just going to show you a quick demo right here. We have a script code on the top that just says alert XSS. I'm just going to copy that into this query search thing here, search, and then it pops up an alert. So essentially what's happening is this page is actually reading that search as an actual script instead of just a string itself. It's reading that and saying like, oh, I have to run this as HTML. And it's actually doing that function on its, its own. And stuff like that is, can be represented by this graph here that I found on a website called XS, XS, XSS. Um, and, just, and I'm already short on time, so I'm just going to quickly go through this. Um, you send the script. Um, and this is very common on things like if you have to like leave a comment on uh, on a like, certain page because you leave that script in the comments and then when another user has to load that page that's when it's actually executed and then um, you see that's what's happening right here the victim's browser is actually clicking that and it's actually loading this script right here and then that's how you can actually get this bunny onto learn dot if you can actually get cross site scripting to work. So who actually thinks LearnDot is, does not protect against cross-site scripting? Doug thinks that LearnDot does not protect against cross-site <laughs> scripting. So we can do a quick little test right here by just going on the reflections, typing in the word script, alert, XSS, like that, ending that script, and then saving it. And then if I go to my reflections, if it worked, it should pop up a screen that says alert. It does not. In fact, it actually goes down here <laughs> perfectly as a string. Now, there's something I want to talk about briefly. I uh, don't want to spend too much time on it, and that's something called uh, encoding. And what that means is most uh, sites that protect against 
cross-site scripting, what they do is they kind of escape characters. So for example, they don't allow characters such as like the less than or greater than sign. And what they do is um, they look for those things and they use them only strictly as a string. But there are certain hacks that you can do where you um, encode those certain things. So for example, the Unicode for less than sign is I believe percent three F or three C or something like that. And that's that. And then like the other way is I think percent three E. I, I believe it's something like that. Um, Learned out also, also protects themselves against that as well. And they also protect themselves against double encoding, which means encoding that encoding. I tried them both. Um, so to move on further, uh, so that was double encoding. So one thing that XSS, X, cross-site scripting could be dangerous for is something that a lot of you have made fun of me for, and that's when I have that little sticker on my webcam. Because that's, that's, like, um, that's something like my sister does, and like I kind of just like inherited it from her, sort of. Um, but it's something that is actually very, very simple that someone could do to you as well. Like this right here um, is just actually what I use for my stackathon. It's, this activates the webcam, and it actually sends and makes, puts that Im uh, all that data into a video, and that's in this image right here the hidden context I'll get data. And then the idea is after this, they would actually send this information back to the attacker, whoever that person may be. So it's actually very much possible that this uh, cross-site scripting could be used for more things than just messing around with the page and adding bunnies on them as well. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is something called improper access. Uh, improper access essentially means that when someone as, like, such as a user does not have the ability to access a page, or like they shouldn't be, have access to a page, but then they actually end up getting access to that page as well. Um, and essentially, a lot of those things, like you just have to, you kind of just like, you can just build into your routes and make sure like, oh, if this person is an admin, then they can only look at certain things. Um, and so how many of you think your stack stores were protected against that? <laughs> Very smart, you were not protected against that. And how many of you think LearnDot is protected against that? Okay, very good. So uh, these, this is this is just Postman, um, and I just built like you know just regular whatever um, I sent requests, and this is what I got back. This is the uh, the create, the read, the update, and the delete. But one thing I want you to pay attention to is these little red flags right here, and to look at the response that came back. It says JWT malformed. Pay attention to that because that'll be important a little bit later. Um, so I couldn't get them to, to access the database itself. However, they actually, it actually is kind of public information in a way. Um, it's actually something that, it's, it's information that can be returned. It's something that actually learned out just passes along through in like all your consoles and stuff like that. And it's like all that information right there is just for example, like that's my information right there. And it's something that it's just, it was out in the public. But like the information there is actually not very, very like secretive. It's just simply like my email and stuff like that. However, I just want to show this as an example of like, if you were an attacker, this is the type of thing that you would kind of look for. It's just like any information that you could get that you can use for an attack in some way. So for example, here, I want you to pay attention to these circles here. One says roles with an array that just says student. And the other thing is this thing right here that says token. And many of you remember what tokens are used for, so this will come into play a little bit later. Um, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about uh, before I wrap everything up in one is A9, uh, which is just using components with vulnerabilities. Uh, which means like, for example, if when you use a library that may not be updated properly, or sorry, that you didn't download the most updated version of it, and the older ones have a property on it that like has a security flaw in it as well. So a thing that I noticed was like very repetitive in articles that I read was like hackers would look for things like that in order to try to get access into your application itself. Um, so it, just looking at the file that learn.servers up themselves, you'll see that the roles category that I mentioned earlier plays into things like this. Like ngif has role admin. So I only had uh, my array that said student on it, so things like this I couldn't get access to. But if I was an attacker wanting to get into this site, this is something that I would look to implement. Um, but not only that, but you can just look at even the resources that you can gather information from, like even the Angular folders themselves. Like you know now that, um, like again, like these employees, you know that they use something called BT forward socket IO. Um, 
Um, you know from the return headers that they use their server's cowboy, they chunk their data, then this is something that's like linked to sockets. Um, you can use something like, uh, like root scope broadcast to manipulate it to your needs or emit signals. And when those things are emitted, you can pass objects to it to do things that you want it to do. Um, and I'm running out of time, so I just want to quickly talk about authentication. So on Monday of review week, I kind of gave up when I hit this right here. See that long string right there? That is an authentication token, which is used, um, which is created by JSON Web Token. Um, and it, I kind of gave up at this point because it was just a lot of work that you had to do because they take like your header, um, the URL in base64 encode that, they take your body, the URL64 encode that, they put a period in between each of those things, and then they use their secret key to then use a uh, SH256 hash on it to get that result. And that was just a lot for me to handle on one review week, so I was like, I'll just get past it. Um, but I did come up, eventually come up with something interesting later that night, and that was this file right here. Um, I did a couple more playing around with what I, with what I was doing before, and I got this. Um, and quite frankly, I kind of stopped there because I didn't want to know what I could do next because what I did to get here was already like a little bit like I don't want to destroy anything. Um, so I just stopped there. But um, I just wanted to wrap up by saying that there are, this is kind of like the approach that I saw when I was reading all these articles in terms of like what you could do in terms of like looking at security flaws in your own application and how others may want to get into um, your, like your application. And these are a couple of links that um, if you want, you can read more on. Um, if, you have, if you want to know anything specific, you can ask me afterwards as well. Um, but that's all I have. Thank you.